the interactive technical manual for approved Federation visitors and Starfleet personnel is now active on this terminal. Please indicate whether you wish to resume from a previously saved tour file or begin again. Please indicate whether you wish to begin with a guided tour or explore on your own initiative. Exterior view of the Galaxy Class Starship USS Enterprise NCC 1701D. landing of the saucer module on a planetary body is the final option, short of total evacuation by lifeboat modules. Saucer separation systems are engaged during specific emergency conditions, allowing independent operation of the primary saucer and secondary engineering modules. Saucer separation proceeds upon confirmed operator signal and is computer controlled to allow real-time adjustment of structural integrity and inertial damping fields. Enterprise is equipped. 
equipped with seven different shuttle vehicles ranging in size from two-person shuttle pods to warp-powered cargo transports. Personnel shuttle Type 6 can be configured to accommodate up to eight persons and is intended for use as a light short-range warp shuttle. Personnel shuttle Type 7 can be configured to accommodate up to eight persons and is intended for use as a medium short-range warp shuttle. Cargo shuttle Type 9A can carry a crew of three and is intended for use as a long-range warp shuttle. The USS Enterprise is equipped with three major shuttle bay facilities. The main shuttle bay located on Deck 4 and two secondary shuttle bays located on Deck 13. Shuttle pods and EVA. Shuttle pod type 15 is a two-person craft intended for short-range usage. Shuttle pod type 15A is a two-person craft, slightly more powerful than type 15, also intended for short-range usage. Shuttle pod type 16 is a two-person craft intended for use in medium-range operations. Spake's work pod type M1 can be configured to accommodate one to three persons and is intended for use in the manipulation of industrial payloads. Extravehicular activity refers to situations in which crew members are required to exit the starship into an airless or otherwise hostile environment. Such situations may include detailed visual inspections, periodic maintenance, damage control, and specialized hardware modifications. 